You're tuned in to The Andrew Lawton Show. So I want to bring into this discussion now Senator Denise Batter, Saskatchewan Senator, and the woman who launched the petition to have members of the Conservative Party have their say. Senator, thanks very much for joining me today. Oh, thank you very much for having me on your show. Really appreciate it, Andrew. So let's start with the why now. This is an election that was just under two months ago. A lot of the concerns that you've raised in the petition and in your video and and accompanying interviews have been raised by some members of the conservative base really as as recently as the day after the election. Uh, Why wait until now to launch this initiative? Well, I think right now what's become clear is the members deserve to have a say. And that's what I'm trying to give them an effective channel to do that, Um, because since becoming leader, and especially during the federal election, Aaron O'Toole has repeatedly reversed Conservative Party policies without consultation or input from party members and and caucus as well. And it's critical, I think, that party members be given a chance to uh, voice their have their voice heard. Um, Otherwise, I'm very concerned that the party might split. And that's what I've been becoming increasingly concerned about over the last number of weeks, is that our party could split in two again, and leaving the Liberals to govern for potentially another generation. And that is a very worrisome prospect for a Liberal government that's already done so much damage to so many parts of this country, including for sure, especially my region of Western Canada. You say that you want to prevent a a split, but a number of conservative colleagues of yours have said that you're the one being divisive by launching a petition like this and and making an, an internal fight or what they believe should be an internal fight more public. Right. Well, I believe that our members deserve to have say. This leadership review is going to happen one way or the other. Right now, it's scheduled to happen in 2023. I simply want it to happen in the normal course of events, which is usually about six months or so after an election loss. That's what Mr. Harper faced when he lost the 2004 election. That was actually the first election my husband was elected in. So I remember that time frame well. Um, And he was successful in that leadership review. Andrew Scheer would have faced the same sort of leadership review after the 2019 election loss. Um, But he had decided to step down as leader prior to that. So this is the normal course is around six Six months, not two years. So that's all I'm asking is that, um, especially because not only do we need to have the members heard on Mr. O'Toole's leadership and their confidence in that, but also election night, um, Aaron O'Toole said that our members needed to have the courage to change. And so if after all of those dramatic policy reversal we've already seen, including carbon tax and guns and conscience rights, things like that, Um, If we're only just starting to go down the road of increased number of dramatic policy reversals, the members need to buy into that and have a say on what they think about that. Um, Yeah. I know that in in 2019, after that a loss for the Conservatives, you you were very much, if I recall, wanting Andrew Scheer to have the benefit of a bit more time. Why is it different now with Aaron O'Toole? It's not different in the least. Andrew Scheer was going to face that leadership review vote that would have been held at the party convention, which was scheduled to happen in uh, the following April, which was six months after that election occurred. That's all I'm asking that Mr. O'Toole go through that same sort of process. And Andrew Scheer um, had 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 a number of different wins in that particular election. We increased our seat count by 22. We had significantly increased the popular vote. We had won some you know, hard fought seats in key areas that we needed to win in the GTA and in Vancouver suburbs and places like that. But in this past election that we just had, um, unfortunately, under Mr. O'Toole's leadership, we lost by every measure. Um, We lost seats, we lost half a million votes. We lost some of those very hard fought seats in, in the GTA which he had contended that his policy flip-flops would lead us to win more in the GTA. Instead, what we saw was losses there in in Alberta and Edmonton and Calgary in the Vancouver suburbs. So these urban and suburban seats um, that Mr. O'Toole was saying that these types of more centrist policies um, would help us win, we lost by all of those measures. Well, I think your petition touches on something very important here, which is that 
you know, a lot of people will overlook a lot of things if you win. So the idea of the appeals to Quebec, the moderation of policy, if that had been a gamble that paid off, I think some people might be a lot more forgiving of it. But when you do that and it doesn't work, you're like, well, what was it all for? Yes, absolutely. And also, I mean, I actually come from the PC side of the party, so I'm not a adverse to centrist policies, but the key is that they have to be presented with integrity and um, consistency and the support and buy-in of your members. Because if you don't have that, then you you have no way to present yourself with, uh, with credibility to the voters of Canada, which is the main thing that we need to do here. And if the members had decided, okay, yes, we're going to moderate on this element or this element, that's fine, but that has not happened. In fact, our last policy convention happened only in March. And at that time we still had, and we still do now have a policy platform in our conservative party platform um, that is anti-carbon tax yet, then the very next month in April, Mr. O'Toole did the 180 degree shift on carbon tax and without the buy-in of our members or caucus um, in what we had then was we ran an election campaign um, just this summer based on a carbon tax. And, you know, despite the fact that we ran on that, some people might say, well, you know, you should have tried some more centrist policies. Well, we had a carbon tax and that did not get us seats in the GTA or Vancouver suburbs. In fact, it actually, our, our election losses were magnified in those particular areas. I know in last year's leadership race, you were a supporter of Peter McKay. Is there a successor you have in mind for this, either Peter McKay or someone else, or is your imminent goal just Aaron O'Toole has to go? My imminent goal is giving the members a say in whether um, the members have continued confidence right now in Mr. O'Toole's leadership, but more importantly, in this future direction of the party. Because when he says courage to change, what else is coming? We need to know that. And the members who are the real bosses of the Conservative Party, they are the ones that need to have a say in that and indicate that they're fine with it. And I am someone who, um, I'm just one voice in this whole process. The members who were there is potentially hundreds of thousands of them across the country we have already seen extremely good support for people signing our petition. And of course, you need to be a member to sign it. Um, if you've let your membership lapse in the recent um, in the recent past, you can renew it and then sign the petition if you just want to have a say. And perhaps the members will decide that, no, we're fine with this. We disagree with you, Senator Batters. That's that's democracy. Uh, Let's talk about who should have that say, because I I think you've been very clear it is, in fact, the members, and that should be the cornerstone of a grassroots party. In her video responding to your petition, Michelle Ramble Garner, a Conservative MP, has said that this should just be had out in caucus, not in this broader scale. What's your response to that? Well, I think the members always need to have a say, and that's certainly what I'm hearing from many of my caucus colleagues, um, as well as uh, former MPs and that sort of thing, um, and EDA presidents, um, EDA members and volunteers from across the country. They want to have a say, and I don't think that it's simply something, I mean, the caucus avenue, as uh, caucus voted to give itself the right to review Mr. O'Toole's leadership, if If uh, caucus chose to do that, that's one avenue. However, to sideline the membership of the party um, is, is not a good thing to happen. We need to let them have a voice in this whole process, and then they can decide whether this is acceptable to them or not. I don't want to get into a a big debate about the ins and outs of the Conservative Party of Canada Constitution, because I think you and I will both be asleep, as will most of our uh, our viewers here. But I I will say just for a moment that Conservative President Robert Batherson has said that this is not a valid or constitutional mechanism for reviewing the leadership that you're putting forward. And and I I think that, as I said earlier on the show, a plain text reading of the Constitution suggests you can have a referendum on anything. And if Aaron O'Toole looked at those results and, and didn't feel he had a mandate, he would have to step down and and it doesn't need to be binding for it to be effective. But if the Conservative Party doesn't have that referendum, if the Conservative Party does what it sounds like Robert Batherson is doing here and saying that this is not a legitimate petition, how far are you prepared to go? Well, we'll see what happens already. um, As of when I checked earlier today, um, 1,800 people had already signed the petition. So if we have a situation where we have thousands of Conservative Party members signing this, wanting this voice, and 
and the party brass rules it out of order, that will not be acceptable to the members. And frankly, I'm a, I'm a lawyer. Um, we've looked at this carefully, and I, I have briefly considered Mr. Batherson's response. I don't agree with it. Um, he refers to particular parts of the Constitution that deal just with leadership selection process and says that this is not my referendum request is not allowed because it doesn't comply with the requirements for that. But I'm not asking that this be a leadership selection process initiated. I'm simply asking that the members, that the party conduct a referendum of the members in order to be able to, for them to be able to decide whether there should be a confidence vote in Aaron O'Toole's continued leadership. That's all I'm asking for is a question being put to the members. And as you rightly point out, Andrew, this there is no um, indication in the constitution anywhere that uh, these types of referendums are limited um, by any particular matter. So I think that this is in order and frankly democracy is never out of order i know that uh, a global news report yesterday said that your petition and your campaign is part of a multi-step process what else can we expect in this who else is going to be joining this call well there will be many people i think that um that come out of public supporting uh this petition and other measures that are taking place i mean I don't want to comment on anything like that for the future, but I, I just really encourage uh, people to take a strong look at this. If they disagree with me, fine, but I really think that, you know, the members need to have the say right now. And uh, I know that there will be a number of uh, people, both, I'm sure, current caucus colleagues, although, you know, there definitely are, are those who have fears about repercussions from leadership. And so, that's why perhaps I'm the one who's um, making, you know, has launched this petition right now. But I know that there are already, yesterday we saw many people coming out in support of this. I know there will be more people, both current and former caucus members, who agree with this. But also, very importantly, across the country, members from across the country have been hearing from people from all across the country. And this just echoes what I heard um, when I door knocked at uh, in all three Regina ridings in the last campaign, um, and what my caucus colleagues were also hearing from their constituents in many other parts of the country. It's not just a Western Canadian thing. People have these concerns, as I'm sure you've been hearing as well, that uh, we want to make sure also that if we're, if we're um, part of this type of a Conservative Party, I mean, power without principles is meaningless, and power without principles is the current Trudeau government, and no Conservative wants that. So we want to make sure that we actually have a party that is adhering to our principles, that the members have agreed to, and that very delicate balance that was crafted when the Conservative Party was merged stays intact. Just one final question, if I may, Senator. You were a supporter of Peter McKay. You uh, were, as you mentioned earlier, from the PC tradition and the PC lineage of the party. A lot of other critics of Aaron O'Toole right now that I'm seeing are, are from the blue Tory side of things, a lot of pro-life and social conservative members. Do you think there's going to be a clash in what needs to come next if, if Aaron O'Toole's leadership is being challenged from, from really both sides of the party? Well, I, what I've been hearing is people who are signing this petition and who want this um, um, review to take place in this referendum to occur from all people who supported all of the candidates in the last leadership race. So it's not simply one part of the party, as you point out, or another. And, you know, including people who supported Mr. O'Toole. And I think that that well could be because uh, they may feel especially betrayed because uh, they they supported him as a true blue conservative. And yet then only, uh, you know, one year later, after he ran in that leadership race, he was campaigning in an election in, in a way that, in my point, from my point of view, was much too similar to what uh, the Liberals were campaigning on. So we need to make sure that what we have um, in place here with the very core conservative principles that we have, um, that needs to that needs to be respected and the member's voice needs to be respected. Senator Denise Batters, the petition is at membersvote.ca. Senator, thanks very much for your time today. Thank you, Andrew. Really appreciate it and look forward to seeing how many more people sign up. Thanks for listening to The Andrew Lawton Show. Support the program by donating to True North at www.tnc.news.